Okay, well, this is it. I just wanted to add a little music, but it's probably going to get copyright protected. So I'm going to cut it out and not have the music right now. I did want to talk about a lot of stuff. And uh, as you can see, I gave you a forecast. But what we'll do next is we'll just go through and remind everyone that the pyramids are located at the center mass of the world. If you put North America, I'm sorry, if you put the Americas back together with Africa, you're going to have almost the exact amount of of mass, a uh, uh, land mass. Look at Greenland compared to Australia. And look at North America and South America. If you slide it back over and put it with Africa, you've got a very similar land mass. I don't know how my audience is going to react to these types of videos. I'll be honest, they're just uh, talking about uh, stuff randomly. And later on, I'm going to use these live streams to kind of reorganize my thoughts and get this stuff together. Um, what I came up with recently was stuff about the Sphinx and extinction events. You know, a long time ago, uh, there were many ancient architectural things built. And as you can see, there's Easter Island right there. That was an important one. And along Machu Picchu, there's Africa, there's stuff going across the Sahara, including the Egypt, uh, sorry, the, the pyramids, and then the one in China, and there's several others. Okay, I don't know what that one is right there. I'm kind of curious. I'll have to check this out. They're all listed down here. And what this line is, is the previous, uh, well, this is called the equal azimuthal prediction. Projection, projection. The equal azimuth, azimuthal projection. And what they think it is is a previous um, line of an equatorial line and maybe even the equator. I'm not really sure. Pretty close to the equator uh, when the before the Earth had shifted its axis. And as you can see in this, you can even see Antarctica down at the bottom. So you have to understand that you're getting a real distorted view of the Earth. So there's lots of more. Uh, there's a lot of more things to be done with that. This guy down in Australia, uh, he just wants some food, you know. Don't don't deny him the pleasure. Uh, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Just search 20 Years in Taiwan or go to the link. And I'm David Sig Hansen. I've got phone numbers. You can contact me. I'm not hiding. And I'm in Taiwan. You can uh, look at my educational background. I do have a lot of professional experience in regards to a whole plethora of topics and things. And I also have a lot of education experience here in Taiwan and, be, and before I came in the USA. Now, how we – okay, I didn't want to talk about that. Um, but And I do want to talk about the Sphinx a little bit later. But really, the, the review part is the Orion correlation theory, how the three pyramids are aligned uh, in a way that represent the belt of Orion. Now, the other part is the other stars, Betelgeuse and Bellatrix. And this theory, if you take a look – at um, some stuff. I'll show you the links later. Uh, you'll see that over on the right, there's Orion's belt and the Great Pyramids. I think this is the best matchup right here. These other ones I'm not so sure about. Uh, and the reason why I say that is China. You've got the large pyramid, but it's the two small ones that are aligned. Well, that's not what is happening here in Orion, is it? So that can just be misleading. And we've got these other pyramids around it. So I'd like to take a look at the whole picture. In Mexico, where I've been before, um, I just don't understand uh, why this could count. So I'd have to take another look and um, see how Mexico looked, you know, uh, before it got, uh, how should I say, the early photographs of the Mexican pyramids. I'd like to see those. I'd like to see the earlier photographs from 100. I don't know what this is. And I do know what this is, and this is turned around. And so that's one of the problems with the Orion correlation theory, isn't it? Because when you look at the belt, you see the two the two stars, the larger ones, and honestly, they're about the same, but this one is a, a skew, right? But, you know, when I was a kid looking at Orion 
and of course I didn't know what Nebula was at the time. I wasn't about the belt and see as you can see here that this skewage is a little more extreme. So you know there's a, there's differences. Now this I don't even know if this is true. I saw this picture and I grabbed it, but uh, these two are lined up and there's the stars and then you have the small one. Is that true? Uh, I have to double check. You know, do my own research on that. But the correlation does. Um, let's get back to this. This is called the New Orion Theory, as seen on thehiddenrecords.com. Uh, Giza over a hundred years ago. <clears throat> so this is trying to say that the, this is the way it looked before your uh, Egypt messed it up by doing certain things, and we can talk about that later. But the, you've got these ruins way far away, and here and here. And they're trying to say, well, there's the belt in the middle, but wait a minute, how far away are they? Are, they're, they're not that far, so it's not to scale. Why would they make the belt so big? Um, what's the point? And here it says, uh, I don't know. I'm not even going to push this theory because when I lined it up with Orion, it seemed upside down. You know, here's the here's north, and you can see it hooks down, but this is hooking up. So we have a problem here. But I thought, okay, let's turn it over and see how it lines up. So you've got Betelgeuse right there. And you know what I always looked at when I was a kid was how symmetrical the distance was from these two stars. And so this looks like it's right in the middle intersecting Betelgeuse. And uh, I forgot this one. I think this is Ry Rigel or Bellatrix. I have to double check the names of the stars. And uh, then you had these two stars uh, out here. And... This one also seems to be in the center of that. Now, I thought, well, this can be easily solved by lining them up. I'll just take these lines. Well, that one's not perfect. The first one was perfect. And so what happens is when you take the belt, forget that guy. When you take the belt, you do have, of course, you can't align that third star in the belt. So you go with the two big ones, and you get this triangle. Even if you do do the star in the third one, I have an example of that here. I did it there. But you still have a triangle that's on the top side of the belt line, and it creates a triangle on top of the belt. And that happens, but it's upside down. I turned it over. This is 100% or 180 degrees turned over. So when we talk about this correlation, you know, it's not so cut and dry, and uh, we're going to see some more information. Let me start. Uh, the NASA scientists warns Earth is due for an extinction level event. Why am I bringing this up? And why do we need to know about this? Well, if you look at the past, the major extinction events happened 434 million years ago, another one 354, another one 251, another one 205, and then the one that killed the dinosaurs happened 65 million years ago. Now, here's a link I'm going to show you. You've got the first one. It killed... Okay, we're going backwards. This is 65, famed for the death of the dinosaurs. 65 million years ago, end of the different periods. I'm not going to even get into it. I, I wanted to go with a bigger one. Now, this one, the Triassic, Jurassic, Max extinction, was, uh, I saw the number, okay. Okay, 200 million years ago, um, it doesn't say it was a mass extinction event, but it doesn't say how many people were killed. When I say, I'm sorry, not people, um, animals. Now, this one, the Permian one that happened 250 million years ago, that killed 96% uh, of the species on Earth. Then, uh, and by the way, which one was the comet? We don't remember. Late Devonian mass extinction. Okay, 100 million, uh, sorry, 400 million, sorry, 359 million years ago. I think we're talking about, like, loss of oxygen mass extinctions for three quarters of all species and then the the big one the biggest the, the 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 third largest extinction in earth's history 85 percent of sea life was wiped out okay here's another one i got from wikipedia and you can see the ones we just looked at uh the most recent one 65 it's right there but before or more recently than that we've got the paleogene neogene and quaternary and actually this holocene extinction is still ongoing because we are the cause it says possible causes humans and now look at this one here the one next to it 13,000 that's an important number 
And the reason why I talk about that is because we've got um, an event that happened 13,000 years ago uh, that maybe sank Atlantis, or actually Atlantis was more like a few thousand. This was the beginning of an ice age 13,000 years ago. And we'll talk more about that uh, as I show you the slides. Okay, these guys, I don't want to try watching these, but these guys are talking about the Sphinx and the true age, and this guy got into it, and he was talking about the erosion controversy. Now, when you see these um, water erosion evidence, this is on stone. It's not like a sand hill. Uh, you can see this type of shape on sand hills, but this guy is claiming that it was carved out of the bedrock and that if you look at the Sphinx here, you can see the same erosion patterns because when they, oh, by the way, we uh, kind of all the consensus is, is the head has been changed, right? And so when we saw this in sand, we saw, um, we saw the sand buried up to about here. You have erosion that occurred above the sand uh, and, and here below the, the level of the sand where you saw in the old photos. Uh, can't talk about it too much. Whoops. And he, this guy gets into it a lot, and he's talking about the erosion lines. And I'm convinced that uh, these guys have good theories 12,000 years ago, right? And that's probably what killed whoever built the Sphinx. Now, also, everybody thinks that the pyramids are younger than the Sphinx. So let's talk about Atlantis a little bit. There's like six theories of what happened to Atlantis, but here it shows an island between Africa and America. Now, uh, there's other islands here as well. So these three islands, and what's, I guess that's the, um, the, the oh, what's the name of these islands here? I forgot already. We're going to get into it in a second. It's actually a different theory, but this was a continent in the Middle Atlantic that sunk into the ocean. Now, do we, I don't believe this, that it sunk. Bermuda Triangle, and as you can see, the Bermuda Triangle swallowed up the Atlantis. Isn't that the same story? Isn't that the same theory, except it sunk in the Bermuda Triangle? Okay, that's a whole different, and I don't believe in the Bermuda Triangle theories, so that's done. Atlantis was Antarctica. Well, no, maybe, but then wouldn't we see ruins there? Wouldn't we find ruins? And maybe that's another controversy. I've seen some videos. Atlantis was a mythical retelling of the Black Sea Flood. Okay, so that they're saying that there was an Atlantis in the middle of here. Okay, that I I don't know. I don't think that it would be called Atlantis. And is that what Plato said? Atlantis is a story of the Minoan civilization that flourished in the Greek islands. Okay, now that makes more sense for Plato. 2500 to 1600 BC. That makes a little more sense, but the, the time doesn't have any major flooding. So uh, they're just saying it's a civilization that's gone. And number six, Plato it didn't invent it. I'm sorry, it didn't exist at all. Plato invented it. Well, I mean, we have other talks. But now, the bigger stories, and um, I kind of, uh, I didn't get to go through into detail as everything I was going to talk about because of um, the, the videos. I can't show those without getting cut off. And I'm going to double check and make sure this video is still going. Yeah, and I know I don't have a lot of people watching. I mean, this video is really for me. But if people see it, I'm, I'm going to make the video like people are seeing it. The oldest tools outside Africa found rewriting the human story. This is the biggest news of all. Okay, this was just yesterday. July 11th, 2018. New evidence suggests that our ancient cousins left the continent much earlier than thought. Okay, the basic story is that Africa about 100,000 years ago um, produced humans and then humans left Africa and went into Mesopotamia and you know first Egypt of course and then uh, across across um, the Middle East and and then it started to grow in all directions from there of course uh, major civilizations India China and then of course uh, the Roman Empire eventually that whole area was uh, attributed towards Africa, but now we have Chinese tools found. Chinese Loess Plateau now holds the record for housing the oldest stone tools outside of Africa, according to a study published in the journal Nature. Here's another article on the same story. Hominins, I guess that means people who used tools, 
or yeah, humans who use tools lived in China 200, 2 million, 2.1 million years ago, or maybe they just before humans. I'm not really sure what a homonym is, so I don't want to talk about that. Okay, so the new stone tool pushes back the date. So uh, 2 million years is a long time for an ancient civilization to exist and create the pyramids and create the Sphinx and then get wiped out 13,000 years ago. And then um, the Ice Age ends and drowns Atlantis. You know, my numbers aren't aligned. I don't have my story straight, so I'm not going to try to push a story. These are questions that I'm asking, and I'm thinking about it. There's Bukowski. There's my shattered thoughts. There's my channel. Please subscribe. That's the end, and thank you for your time.